Let me sing of what I know by William Allingham, read for LibriVox.org by Liam. A wild west coast, a little town, where little folk go up and down, tides flow and winds blow, night and tempest and the sea, human will and human fate. What is little? What is great? Howsoever the answer be, let me sing of what I know. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Winding Banks of Urn by William Allingham. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Winding Banks of Urn. Adieu to Belashanny, where I was bred and born. Go where I may, I'll think of you, as sure as night and morn. The kindly spot, the friendly town, where every one is known and not a face in all the place but partly seems my own there's not a house or window there's not a field or hill but east or west in foreign lands i'll recollect them still i leave my warm heart with you though my back i'm forced to turn adieu to belashanny and the winding banks of fern no more on pleasant evenings we'll saunter down the mall when the trout is rising to the fly the salmon to the fall the boat comes straining on her net and heavily she creeps cast off cast off she feels the oars and to her berth she sweeps now fore and aft keep hauling and gathering up the clue till a silver wave of salmon rolls in among the crew then they may sit with pipes alit and many a joke and yarn adieu to belashanny and the winding banks of urn the music of the waterfall the mirror of the tide when all the green-hilled harbour is full from side to side from port the sun to bully bonds and round the abbey bay from rocky in his cymer to cool nargit sandhills grey while far upon the southern line to guard it like a wall the late mountains clothed in blue gaze calmly over all and watch the ships sail up or down the red flag at her stern adieu to these adieu to all the winding banks of urn farewell to you kildoni lads and them that pull an oar a lug sail set or haul a net from the point to mulla moor from killybags to bold sleeve league that ocean mountain steep six hundred yards in air aloft six hundred in the deep from duran to the ferry bridge and round by tullen strand level and long and white with waves where gull and curlews stand head out to sea when on your lee the breakers you discern adieu to all the billowy coast and winding banks of urn farewell coolmore bundoran and your summer crowds that run from inland homes to see with joy the atlantic's setting sun to breathe the buoyant salted air and sport among the waves to gather shells on sandy beach and tempt the gloomy caves to watch the flowing ebbing tide the boats the crabs the fish young men and maids to meet and smile and form a tender wish the sick and old in search of health for all things have their turn and i must quit my native shore and the winding banks of urn farewell to every white cascade from the harbour to balik and every pool where fins may rest and ivy shaded creek the sloping fields the lofty rocks where ash and holly grow the one split yew tree gazing on the curving flood below the loch that winds through islands under tarrow mountain green and castle caldwell's stretching woods with tranquil bays between and breezy hill and many a pond among the heath and fern for i must say adieu adieu to the winding banks of urn the thrush will call through camelin groves the lifelong summer day the waters run by mossy cliff and banks with wild flowers gay the girls will bring their work and sing beneath a twisted thorn or stray with sweethearts down the path among the growing corn along the riverside they go where i have often been oh never shall i see again the happy days i've seen a thousand chances are to one i never may return adieu to bella shanny and the winding banks of urn adieu to evening dances when merry neighbors meet and the fiddle says to boys and girls get up and shake your feet 
to Shanachas and wise old talk of Erin's days gone by, who trenched the wrath on such a hill, and where the bones may lie, of saint or king or warrior chief, with tales of fairy power, and tender ditties sweetly sung to pass the twilight hour. The mournful song of exile is now for me to learn. Adieu, my dear companions, on the winding banks of Urn. Now measure from the commons down to each end of the pert. Round the abbey, moy and nether, I wish no one any hurt. The main street, back street, college lane, the mall and portness son. If any foes of mine are there, I pardon every one. I hope that man and womankind will do the same by me. For my heart is sore and heavy at voyaging the sea. My loving friends I'll bear in mind and often fondly turn to think of Belashanny and the winding banks of Urn. If ever I'm a moneyed man, I mean, please God, to cast my golden anchor in the place where youthful years were past. Though heads that now are black and brown must meanwhile gather grey, new faces rise by every hearth and old ones drop away. Yet dearer still that Irish hill than all the world beside. It's home sweet home wherever I roam through lands and waters wide. And if the Lord allows me, I surely will return to my native Balashani and the winding banks of Urn. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Abby Azoro by William Ellingham, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Abby Azoro Grey, grey is Abby Azoro by Belashanny town. It has neither door nor window, the walls are broken down. The carven stones lie scattered in briar and nettle bed. The only feet are those that come at burial of the dead. A little rocky rivulet runs murmuring to the tide, singing a song of ancient days in sorrow, not in pride. The boar tree and the lightsome ash across the portal grow, and heaven itself is now the roof of Abbey Azero. It looks beyond the harbour stream to Galban Mountain Blue. It hears the voice of Erna's fall, Atlantic breakers too. High ships go sailing past it, the sturdy clank of oars brings in the salmon boat to haul a net upon the shores. And this way to his home creek, when the summer day is done, slow sculls the weary fisherman across the setting sun. While green with corn is Shiga's hill, his cottage white below, but grey at every season is Abbey Azero. There stood one day a poor old man above its broken bridge. He heard no running rivulet, he saw no mountain ridge. He turned his back on Shiga's hill and viewed with misty sight the abbey walls, the burial ground, with crosses ghostly white. Under the weary weight of years he bowed upon his staff, perousing in the present time the former's epitaph. For grey and wasted, like the walls, a figure full of woe. This man was of the blood of them who found it as a row. From Derry to Bandroa's tower, Tyrconnell brought was theirs, spearmen and plunder, bards and wine, and holy abbot's prayers, with chanting always in the house which they had builded high, to God and to St. Bernard, where at last they came to die. At worst, no workhouse grave for him, the ruins of his race shall rest among the ruined stones of this their saintly place. The fond old man was weeping, and tremulous and slow, along the rough and crooked lane he crept from Azero. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Dream by William Ellingham Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia a dream i heard the dogs howl in the moonlight night i went to the window to see the sight all the dead that ever i knew going one by one and two by two on they passed and on they passed townsfellows all from first to last born in the moonlight of the lane quenched in the heavy shadow again schoolmates marching as when we played at soldiers once but now more stayed those were the strangest sight to me who were drowned i knew in the awful sea 
straight and handsome folk, bent and weak too, some that I loved and gasped to speak to, some but a day in their churchyard bed, some that I had not known were dead. A long, long crowd, where each seemed lonely, yet of them all there was one, one only, raised a head or looked my way. She lingered a moment, she might not stay. How long since I saw that fair, pale face! Ah, mother dear, might I only place my head on thy breast, a moment to rest, while thy hand on my tearful cheek were pressed. On, on, a moving bridge they made, across the moon stream, from shade to shade, young and old, women and men, many long forgot, but remembered then. And first there came a bitter laughter, a sound of tears the moment after, and then a music so lofty and gay, that every morning, day by day, I strive to recall it, if I may. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Section 5. The Fairies by William Allingham Read for LibriVox.org by Diana Schmidt Up the airy mountain, down the rushy glen, We daren't go a-hunting for fear of little men. We folk, good folk, trooping all together, Green jacket, red cap, and white owl's feather. Down along the rocky shore, some make their home, they live on crispy pancakes of yellow tide foam, some in the reeds of the black mountain lake, with frogs for their watch dogs all night awake. High on the hilltop, the old king sits. He is now so old and gray, he's nigh lost his wits. With a bridge of white mist, column kill he crosses on his stately journeys from sleeve leg to Rosses or going up with music on cold starry nights to sup with the queen of the gay northern lights they stole little bridget for seven years long when she came down again her friends were all gone they took her lightly back between the night and morrow they thought that she was fast asleep but she was dead with sorrow they have kept her ever since deep within the lake on a bed of flag leaves, watching till she wake. By the craggy hillside, through the mosses bare, they have planted thorn trees for pleasure here and there. Is any man so daring as dig them up in spite, he shall find their sharpest thorns in his bed at night. Up the airy mountain, down the rushy glen, we daren't go a hunting for fear of little men. We folk, good folk, trooping all together, green jacket, red cap, and white owl's feather. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Leprechaun or Fairy Shoemaker by William Allingham. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Leprechaun or Fairy Shoemaker. Little cowboy, what have you heard up on the lonely rest green mound? Only the plaintive yellow bird sighing in sultry fields around? Cherry, 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 chee Only the grasshopper and the bee? Tip tap, rip rap, tick a tack too. Scarlet leather soon together, this will make a shoe. Left, right, pull it tight. Summer days are warm, underground in winter, laughing at the storm. Lay your ear close to the hill. Do you not catch the tiny clamour, busy click of an elfin hammer, voice of the leprechaun singing shrill as he merrily plies his trade? He's a span and a quarter in height. Get him in sight, hold him tight, and you're a made man. You watch your cattle the summer day, sup on potatoes, sleep in the hay. How would you like to roll in your carriage, look for a duchess's daughter in marriage? Seize the shoemaker, then you may. Big boots a-hunting, sandals in the hall, white for a wedding feast, pink for a ball. This way, that way, so we make a shoe, getting rich every stitch, tick tack too. Nine and ninety treasure crocks this keen miser fairy hath, hidden mountains, woods and rocks, 
ruin and round tower, cave and wrath, and where the cormorants build, from times of old guarded by him, each of them filled full to the brim with gold. I caught him at work one day, myself, in the castle ditch where foxglove grows, a wrinkled, wizened, and bearded elf, spectacles stuck on his pointed nose, silver buckles to his hose, leather apron, shoe in his lap, rip-rap, tip-tack, tick-tack, too, a grasshopper on my cap, away the moss flew, buskins for a fairy prince, brogues for his son, pay me well, pay me well, when the job is done. The rogue was mine, beyond a doubt, I stared at him, he stared at me. Servant, sir, humph, says he, and pulled a snuff-box out. He took a long pinch, looked better pleased, the queer little leprechaun, offered the box with a whimsical grace. Poof! He flung the dust in my face, and while I sneezed, was gone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Girl's Lamentation by William Allingham Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer With grief and mourning I sit to spin My love passed by and he didn't come in He passes by me both day and night And carries off my poor heart's delight There is a tavern in yonder town My love goes there and he spends a crown he takes a strange girl upon his knee and never more gives a thought to me. Says he, we'll wed without loss of time and sure our love's but a little crime. My apron string now it's wearing short and my love he seeks other girls to court. Oh, with him I'd go if I had my will. I'd follow him barefoot over rock and hill. I'd never once speak of all my grief if he'd give me a smile for my heart's relief. In our wee garden the rose unfolds with bachelor's buttons and marigolds. I'll tie no posies for dance or fair. A willow twig is for me to wear. For a maid again I can never be till the red rose blooms on the willow tree. Of such a trouble I've heard them tell and now I know what it means full well. As through the long, lonesome night I lie, I'd give the world if I might but cry. But I mustn't moan there or raise my voice, and the tears run down without any noise. And what? Oh, what will my mother say? She'll wish her daughter was in the clay. My father will curse me to my face, the neighbors will know of my black disgrace. My sisters buried three years come Lent, but sure we made far too much lament. Beside her grave they still say a prayer. I wish to God t'was myself was there. The candlemas crosses hang near my bed. To look at them puts me much in dread. They mark the good time that's gone and past. It's like this year's one will prove the last. The oldest cross, it's a dusty brown, but the winter winds didn't shake it down. The newest cross keeps the color bright. When the straw was reaping, my heart was light. The reapers rose with the blink of morn and gaily stooped up the yellow corn. To call them home to the field I'd run through the blowing breeze and the summer sun. When the straw was weaving, my heart was glad, for neither sin nor shame I had. In the barn where old chef was flying around, and the thumping flails made a pleasant sound. Now summer or winter to me it's one, but oh, for a day like the time that's gone. I'd little care was it storm or shine, if I had but peace in this heart of mine. Oh, light and false is a young man's kiss, and a foolish girl gives her soul for this. Oh, light and short is the young man's blame, and a helpless girl has the grief and shame. To the river bank once I thought to go, and cast myself in the stream below. I thought to would carry us far out to sea, 
where they never find my poor babe and me. Sweet Lord, forgive me that wicked mind. You know I used to be well inclined. Oh, take compassion upon my state, because my trouble is so very great. My head turns round with the spinning wheel, and a heavy cloud on my eyes I feel. But the worst of all is at my heart's core, for my innocent days will come back no more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Nobleman's Wedding by William Allingham Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer I once was a guest at a nobleman's wedding. Fair was the bride, but she scarce had been kind. And now, in our mirth, she had tears nigh the shedding her former true lover still runs in her mind. Attired like a minstrel, her former true lover takes up his harp and runs over the strings, and there among strangers his grief to discover a fair maiden's falsehood he bitterly sings. Now here is the token of gold that was broken, seven long years it was kept for your sake. You gave it to me as a true lover's token. No longer I'll wear it, asleep or awake. She sat in her place by the head of the table. The words of his ditty she marked them right well. To sit any longer this bride was not able, so down at the bridegroom's feet she fell. Oh, one, one request, my lord, one and no other. Oh, this one request will you grant it to me? To lie for this night in the arms of my mother, and ever, and ever thereafter with thee. Her one, one request, it was granted her fairly. Pale were her cheeks as she went up to bed, and the very next morning, early, early, they rose, and they found this young bride was dead. The bridegroom ran quickly, he held her, he kissed her, he spoke loud and low, and listened full fain. He called on her waiting maids round to assist her, but nothing could bring the lost breath back again. Oh, carry her softly. The grave is made ready. At head and at foot, plant a laurel bush green, for she was a young and a sweet noble lady, the fairest young bride that I ever have seen. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Kada Bella Shani by William Ellingham Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia See up and down both fair and brown With pretty lasses many, o. But brown or fair, one girl most rare The flower of Bella Shani, o. As straight is she as poplar tree Though not as easy shaken, o. And walks so proud among the crowd, for queen she might be taken, O. Oh, from top to toe, wherever you go, the loveliest girl of any, O. Oh, on your mind, I find unkind, sweet Kate o Bella Shani, O. One summer day the banks were gay, the yearning sunshine glancing there. The big cascade its music played and set the salmon dancing there. Along the green my joy was seen, some goddess bride I thought her there. The fishes too swam close to view, her image in the water there. From top to toe, wherever you go, the loveliest girl of any o. Oh, on your mind, I find unkind, sweet Kate of Bella Shani o. My dear, give you the river sneer, and if you think I'm shamming now. To end my grief, I'll seek relief among the trout and salmon now. 
for shrimps and sharks to make their marks and other watery vermin there unless a mermaid saves my life my wife and me her mermen there from top to toe wherever you go the loveliest girl of any o mavrone your mind i find unkind sweet kate abella shanny o tis all in vain that i complain no use to coax or chide her there as far away from me as spain although i stand beside her there O oh, cruel Kate, since that's my fate, I'll look for love no more in you. The seagull screech as soon would reach your heart as me imploring you. Though fair you are, and rare you are, the loveliest flower of any o. To proud and high, goodbye say I. To Cato Balashanio. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Four Ducks on a Pond by William Ellingham. Read for LibriVox.org by Gabby. Four Ducks on a Pond. Four Ducks on a Pond, a grass bank beyond. A blue sky of spring, white clouds on the wing, what a little thing, to remember for years, to remember with tears. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Aeolian Harp by William Allingham Read for LibriVox.org by Asia What is it that is gone we fancied ours? Oh, what is lost that never may be told? We stray all afternoon, and we may grieve Until the perfect closing of the night. Listen to us, thou grey autumnal eve, Whose part is silence. At thy verge the clouds are broken into melancholy gold. The waifs of autumn and the feeble flowers Glimmer along our woodlands in wet light. Within thy shadow thou dost weave the shrouds Of joy and great adventure, waxing cold, Which once, or so it seemed, were full of might. Some power it was that lives not with us now, A thought we had, but could not, could not hold. O oh, sweetly, swiftly passed, air sings and murmurs, Green leaves are gathering on the dewy bough, O oh, sadly, swiftly passed, air sighs and mutters, red leaves are dropping on the rainy mould. Then comes the snow, unfeatured, vast and white. O oh, what is gone from us, we fancied ours. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Maids of Elfinmere by William Allingham Read for LibriVox.org by Asia When the spinning room was here, came three damsels clothed in white, with their spindles every night. One and two and three fair maidens, spinning to a pulsing cadence, singing songs of Elfinmere, till the eleventh hour was told, then departed through the wold, Years ago and years ago, and the tall reeds sigh as the wind doth blow. Three white lilies calm and clear, and they were loved by every one, most of all the pastor's son, listening to their gentle singing, felt his heart go from him clinging round these maids of Elvenmere. Sued each night to make them stay, saddened when they went away. Years ago and years ago, and the tall reeds sigh as the wind doth blow. Hands that shook with love and fear dared put back the village clock, flew the spindle, turned the rock, flowed the song with subtle sounding till the false eleven was sounding. Then these maids of Elfinmere swiftly, softly left the room, 
like three doves on snowy plume. Years ago and years ago, and the tall reeds sigh as the wind doth blow. One that night who wandered near heard lamentings by the shore, saw at dawn three stains of gore, and the waters fade and dwindle. Nevermore with song and spindle saw we maids of elfin mere. The pastor's son did pine and die, because true love should never lie. Years ago and years ago, and the tall reeds sigh as the wind doth blow. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Twilight Voices by William Ellingham. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Twilight Voices. Now at the hour when ignorant mortals drowse in the shade of their whirling sphere, heaven and hell from invisible portals, breathing comfort and ghastly fear, voices I hear. I hear strange voices, flitting, calling, wavering by on the dusky blast. Come, let us go, for the night is falling. Come, let us go, for the day is past. Troops of joys are they, now departed, winged hopes that no longer stay, guardian spirits grown weary-hearted, powers that have lingered their latest day. What do they say? What do they sing? I hear them calling, whispering, gathering, flying fast. Come, come, for the night is falling. Come, come, for the day is past. Sing they to me, thy tapers wasted, Mortal, thy sands of life run low, Thine hours like a flock of birds have hasted, Time is ending, we go, we go. Sing they so? Mystical voices, floating, calling, Dim farewells, the last, the last? Come, come away, the night is falling, Come, come away, the day is past. See, I am ready, twilight voices, Child of the spirit world am I. How should I fear you? My soul rejoices. O oh, speak plainer. O oh, draw nigh. Fain would I fly. Tell me your message, ye who are calling, Out of the dimness vague and vast. Lift me, take me. The night is falling. Quick, let us go. The day is past. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lover and Birds by William Allingham Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer Within a budding grove, in April's ear sang every bird his best, But not a song to pleasure my unrest, Or touch the tears unwept of bitter love. Some spake, methought, with pity, some as if in jest. To every word of every bird I listened and replied as it behove. Screamed Chaffinch, sweet, 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 pretty lovey, come and meet me here. Chaffinch, quoth I, be dumb a while, in fear thy darling prove no better than a cheat, and never come or fly when wintry days appear. Yet from a twig, with voice so big, the little fowl his utterance did repeat. Then I, the man forlorn hears earth send up a foolish noise aloft. And what'll he do, what'll he do? scoffed the blackbird standing in an ancient thorn, then spread his sooty wings and flitted to the croft with cackling laugh, whom I, being half enraged, called after, giving back his scorn. Worse mocked the thrush, die, die, oh, could he do it, could he do it, nigh, be quick, be quick, here, 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 went his lay, take heed, take heed, then, why, 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 see e now, see e now, he drawled, back, 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 R run away, oh, thrush, be still, or at thy will, Seek some less sad interpreter than I. Air, air, blue air and white, 
whither i flee whither oh whither oh whither i flee thus the lark hurried mounting from the lee hills countries many waters glittering bright whither i see whither i see deeper 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 whither i see 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 gay lark i said the song that's bred in happy nest may well to heaven make flight there's something something sad i half remember piped a broken strain well sung sweet robin robin sung again spring's opening cheerily cheerily be we glad which moved i wist not why me melancholy mad till now grown meek with wetted cheek most comforting and gentle thoughts i had end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Abbot of Innis Fallen by William Ellingham, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Abbot of Innis Fallen. The Abbot of Innis Fallen awoke ere dawn of day. Under the dewy green leaves went he forth to pray. The lake around his island lay smooth and dark and deep, and wrapped in a misty stillness, the mountains were all asleep. Low kneeled the Abbot Cormac when the dawn was dim and grey. The prayers of his holy office he faithfully gan say. Lo kneeled the abbot Cormac while the dawn was waxing red, and for his sin's forgiveness a solemn prayer he said. Lo kneeled that holy abbot while the dawn was waxing clear, and he prayed with loving kindness for his convent brethren dear. Lo kneeled that blessed abbot while the dawn was waxing bright, he prayed a great prayer for Ireland, he prayed with all his might. Low kneeled that good old father while the sun began to dart. He prayed a prayer for all men, he prayed it from his heart. His blissful soul was in heaven, though a breathing man was he. He was out of time's dominion, so far as the living may be. The abbot of Innis Fallen arose upon his feet. He heard a small bird singing, and oh, but it sung sweet. It sung upon a holly bush, this little snow white bird a song so full of gladness he never before had heard. It sung upon a hazel, it sung upon a thorn. He had never heard such music since the hour that he was born. It sung upon a sycamore, it sung upon a briar. To follow the song and hearken, this abbot could never tire. Till at last he well bethought him, he might no longer stay. So he blessed the little white singing bird, and gladly went his way. But when he came to his abbey, he found a wondrous change. He saw no friendly faces there, for every face was strange. The strange man spoke unto him, and he heard from all and each the foreign tongue of the Sassenach, not wholesome Irish speech. Then the oldest monk came forward, in Irish tongue spake he, Thou wearest the holy Augustine's dress, and who hath given it to thee? I wear the Augustine's dress, and Cormac is my name. The abbot of this good abbey, by grace of God, I am. I went forth to pray at the dawn of day, and when my prayers were said, I hearkened a while to a little bird that sung above my head. The monks to him made answer, Two hundred years have gone over, since our abbot Cormac went through the gate and never was heard of more. Matthias now is our abbot, and twenty have passed away. The stranger is lord of Ireland. We live in an evil day. Days will come and go, he said, and the world will pass away. In heaven a day is a thousand years, a thousand years are a day. Now give me absolution, for my time is come, said he. And they gave him absolution, as speedily as might be. Then, close outside the window, the sweetest song they heard, that ever yet since the world began was uttered by any bird. The monks looked out and saw the bird, its feathers all white and clean, and there in a moment beside it another white bird was seen. Those two they sang together, waved their white wings, and fled, flew aloft and vanished, but the good old man was dead. They buried his blessed body where lake and greensward meet, a carven cross above his head, a holly bush at his feet, where spreads the beautiful water to gay or cloudy skies, and the purple peaks of Killarney from ancient woods arise. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
The Ruined Chapel by William Ellingham Read for LibriVox.org by Gabi The Ruined Chapel By the shore a plot of ground Clips a ruined chapel round Buttressed with a grassy mound Where day and night and day go by And bring no touch of human sound Washing of the lonely seas, shaking of the guardian trees, piping of the salted breeze, day and night and day go by, to the endless tune of these. Or when, as winds and waters keep, a hush more dead than any sleep, still mourns to stiller evenings creep, and day and night and day go by, here the silence is most deep. The empty ruins lapsed again into nature's wide domain, sow themselves with seed and grain, as day and night and day go by, and hoard June's sun and April's rain. Here fresh funeral tears were shed, now the graves are also dead, and suckers from the ash trees spread, while day and night and day go by and stars move calmly overhead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of 16 Poems by William Ellingham